Hello and welcome back guys, this is Chicago Ted coming to you with another replay cast. That <laughs> is funny, okay. Still some some bugs that are left to iron out with the new client. But anyway, guys, this is going to be a fantastic replay. I briefly looked at the... Yeah, I know. Chicago Ted, what are you doing? You're supposed to go in without any further knowledge. I didn't look at the score. I, didn't, I just looked at the heroes and I looked at... Okay, well, I did look at that. Anyway, it should be a fun one. So let's see uh, if you agree or disagree. I don't think you'll disagree. But whatever the case, we're going to have a Zeus being played by 64 with Keeper of the Light played by Elizabeth Dewitt. Elder Titan will be played by A with just her on the Outworld Devourer. And finally, move them. Maybe play in the Lone Druid. Meanwhile, for the Dire team, we've got Big Dick Pride on the Little Old Blood Seeker. Uh, okay. Jim Sky is going to be on the Mirana with Odin on the Shadow Fiend. Gary on the Clinks. A Gary. And finally, Bringerang. He'll be on the Anti Mage. One of my personal favorite heroes. One of my, not my favorite hero, but one of my personal favorites. Anyway, looks like a little bit through it. It's going to put a little bit of pressure on the rune, but. Contesting this one's going to be a little bit, it's going to be pretty hard. You've got the dual glaive heroes going up against the magic heroes. Brewing is going to try to contest it. And does it not show who gets the runes anymore? Oh, that's depressing. Maybe it does, and I just didn't know. Huh. I have no idea who got that. Uh, I can check the net worth here and see that it was probably the anti mage. Although, I, I have no clue. I really don't. Anyway, that's that's depressing. So that's one thing that should probably get fixed with this client is seeing who actually got the bounty rune. Anyway, contesting it seems to be the fun thing to do right now. Most teams will opt to send one or two heroes in to check the waters, and if there are people there, usually they'll back off. Sometimes if you feel you're stronger, you'll go in and try to snag the rune. I personally like to go for someone like Nyx because, one, he takes punishment very well. Two, he regens quite nicely from the engagement and three his stun is fantastic for disrupting them grabbing the rune and then walking away you just got to be sure that they don't have many counter stuns of their own or you're going to be walking out giving up first blo blood and getting the first rune is definitely not worth it for that so just some quick uh pro tips that are not so pro from the pub master who's not so much a master chicago ted anyway for the bottom lane, it's going to be Clinks going up against Lone Druid, so quite a bit of range damage for these two. The one uh, difference is that one side's got a, a huge amount of stun, and the other side has the potential for a huge amount of stun. So the other Titan Stomp can set up quite nicely, but not set really anything up. It just sets up. The problem is with the Spirit Bear, once he gets the root, you got to hope that the first hit or second hit is the root, because even though Stomp does keep him in place for a while, once you start hitting with the bear, it's done. So, I think one of the main things to do would be to use that time to position a really good Savage Roar to maybe set up, or actually use a Savage Roar to set up a, an Astral Stomp. That could be really good, actually. Put the Spirit behind them, Roar so they walk into it. That's a really good strategy. I think that combo, we'll have to keep an eye and see if that actually, uh, actually happens. But it looks like for now, Brangarang is going to have a bit of trouble dealing with Elizabeth through it. He's taken quite a bit of damage, and although there isn't an Illuminant yet, the Mana Leak is certainly uh, very annoying to deal with if you're an Anti-Mage. I mean, having Mana for Blink is imperative. If you do not have Mana for Blink, your hero just dies. So you've got to be sure you keep that Blink up and running, and if it's not, then you have to stay really far back. Oh, looks like Big Dick Pride is going to continue to try to make things work in the jungle. And it looks like he's doing a fair, fairly good job sitting level 2.5 at 3 minutes. Not the quickest jungler by any stretch, but certainly getting the job done. Meanwhile, Just Her in a bit of trouble, but the Astral Imprisonment on Odin is enough to save Just Her's life. Although, you've, it's still a very tough place to be in for the Outworld of Hour. You're going to have vision on him. You're giving the Bloodseeker a lot of damage and... Ultimately, you just don't want to be low HP when you've got a blood on the map. So, Big Dick Pride is going to love this, getting all that thirst bonus. And, I mean, across the map, really, the enemy team is fairly low, giving him a ton of bonuses here. Actually, we can see just how much he's getting from this. It's 
94 damage he's hitting for right now. And a lot of 282 movement speed. In fact, Elizabeth Thua is going to go ahead and do some attacking, but will it be enough? Probably not. In the meantime, the neutral creep deny from a, a uh, spade? A spade, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they, they're, they call it differently in other languages. It makes more sense. Could be a joke, or it's just a spade. Whatever. Bring a ring. He is dead. Elizabeth do it. We'll grab the first blood. The first first blood, of course, being the deny. So that's the deal with Anti-Mage. That's the, that's the struggle that he faces. He went for the poor man's shield. He's got four tangos and two iron branches, but not a single one of them used. A huge mistake, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Big Dick Pride's going to go in for Elizabeth do it. And... <laughs> okay. So... Two things you don't want to do. One, go after a Kata Keeper of the Light who's maxing Mana Leak. And two, go after a Zeus with Blood Rage. Because you're going to die. You're going to take a lot of damage first, and then you're going to die because of it. So, bottom lane, a spade. Taking a bit of damage from the Clinks, but nothing to, uh, nothing to spark interest as far as potential deaths go. As long as he just stays back, Jim Sky is going to go ahead and farm his jungle... For some easy creep uh, CS and experience. And the Bangerang is just going to be left to his own devices up here. He's got one point of the Mana Shield, which I like. Unfortunately, I think I'd go for a 1-1-3 um, a one, one, build here. You only need one point in Blink because you only need one escape. The first Blink is enough. If you need any more than that, then something's going really wrong in that lane. But there isn't too much chase from the, ra uh, yeah, from the Radiant. If they just go in on him and he blinks away, he's he's away alive. So I would go for that uh, a couple more points of mana shield just to keep him from getting bursted out of lane too quickly. Meanwhile, Gary is going to get a good attack out on it to the, uh, move him and bring him down. Meanwhile, Odin gets a solo kill on to just her. Now, I think that's the more surprising kill considering a Shadow Fiend should not ever be able to solo kill an OD, but... It happened, and that gives the uh, the Shadow Fiend quite a bit of advantage in this lane. Because now not only does he have the attack damage advantage, he's got the level advantage, and he's hitting for a lot with these raises. I mean, that's uh, 975 magical damage nuke. Not enough to kill just her on its own, just because, you know, magic resistance and whatnot, but it's certainly very powerful. My camera's going crazy here. You know, my big dick pride has learned from his mistakes and is not going to try to counter on this Keeper of the Light. Instead, we'll back off into his jungle, use the shrine. One of my favorite things to do when you're uh, when you're jungling any any hero. You can pretty much jungle any hero with an Iron Talon now with the shrines and the uh, the runes. It might not be the most efficient thing, but if you're in a pinch. Someone like this anti-mage could maybe even move to the jungle. Meanwhile, Brangarang, the lightning bolt giving a lot of flying vision, allows them to keep him in their sights, but is it going to be enough here? He's got a blink up. He can use it whenever he wants, but he's holding on to it for now. And this is where, you know, that second and third point in spell shield come in handy, but the third point in blink really doesn't. He only needs one blink to get away from that, but those points in mana shield, a spell shield, those would have helped so much. In a situation like that. I mean we're looking at bolts that do half the damage that they do now. And with a poor man shield. I mean he really takes very little damage from that lane at all. In fact I. He might even be able to. With those two items just go in. And burn all of their mana. Because they can't do anything to him. Meanwhile Odin in a bit of trouble. A spade and just her going in for this one. They will get the kill. A very good return kill for just her. Unfortunately, he does not get that one. Instead, it will go to A-sharp, a but that'll get a nicely timed drum and Vlad's if he's going for it. I hope. Uh, Soul Ring, that works too. Soul Ring is a decent item to get. Uh, actually, a very good item to get on Elder Titan. In fact, Trank Soul Ring seems to be the build for most uh, spell-reliant roamers as... There's going to be an arrow connecting onto Elizabeth through it, but Jim Sky just so squishy to these lightning bolts. Same thing with Brangerang, and I mean, I'm a broken record, so at this point, my point has been made. But a spade will now move up, just shy of the recipe, 
as Gary gets the kill on the bottom lane. A spade looking on the top. Big Dick Pride might be his target, but this is a tough kill from the get. Instead, Jim Sky walks up to the high ground and uncharted territory and will be demolished by the Thunder God's wrath. So, all the while, the rest of the lanes seem to be farming up pretty well for the Dire Odin, of course, taking that death not too long ago, is coming back with a storm, blowing up creep waves, and finding his gold income. It hasn't really been hindered by that death, just from the death time alone, as Odin, he finds himself the Invis Rune. This could set up a very nice Requiem of Souls as he gets the raise combo! On to Age Speed, and that, that, that is the trick with this hero, as there's the Invis Rune. And move up the high ground, just her. Is going to walk up the charge, the unleash. It demolishes just her. And Odin, with a single Invis rune, will find a double kill. Meanwhile, Gary on the bottom lane will find himself another kill on to move him. And that, I mean, that's two kills for the Dire once again. And Brangerang was actually down for this kill. I don't think he was within range to get the assist on it. But this is, this is good. I think Gary... Might be a little miffed that he's got his lane kind of contested by his own team, but this is necessary. It's a necessary evil for this, and oh, the courier. Do they know it's there? Oh, that, that could have been so bad. The stomp is Odin barely outside the range. He goes for the raise, but is not able to get it off. There is an Astral in prison, and that locks him in the midst of three. He is not in a friendly zone. He will go for those raise combos, turn around for the kill onto a spade turn, and get away from this one semi-alive. But unfortunately, this is where he dies. The Astral should be enough to get him, and Elizabeth do it, just being safe and staying within range. So he gets that assist as Gary moves in. Looking for a bit of damage. Two more attacks is all it would take, but the range isn't quite with him as the Astral comes out. Just her moving in. They get the mana leak, but of course, Gary is in his invisibility, and there isn't very much detection for him, if at all. As 64, bring, bring that big dick pride in the jungle. Uh, Gary, I'll oh, do it. Do it. You got it. Gary, just... No! Oh, just go for it, dude. Oh, man. That could that could have been game-breaking. Still move in. As move him. Gets a kill on Jim Sky. 64. If he goes down here, this is a bigger kill. They just need one more attack. The raise comes through, and Odin will recover most of what he lost from that death. And now, the Shadow Fiend sitting 5-2 and two with 1,400 gold in the bank. We'll probably be looking for a Shadow Blade rather soon. As my camera work skills take a bit of a dive there, I apologize. Sometimes, you know, when you when you use edge panning for the actual game, when you're spectating, it kind of screws you up. But usually it's something you get used to and comfortable around. But I, I mean. When all you do is cast replays nowadays, it's it's, it's kind of hard to stay up to date with those skills. As Gary bringing down a spade, a good chunk of gold now in his pocket, but Big Dick Pride in the top lane gets demolished by a lightning bolt. A lot of demolition going on this game. Probably find more uh, verbs. And Brangerang will grab the rune, make his way back towards the shrine, which is down for 260 seconds, so it's not like they can heal up off that. But a whole lot of nothing going on between these three heroes. They're going to farm Ancients, but that's about it. I would like to see the Marana start to make some more rotations across the map. Of course, ganking a Marana with a Bloodseeker is kind of rough because, well, Arrow and Blood um, Rupture don't exactly synergize very well. Still, though, if you get the Arrow and follow up with the Blood Rite and then... Hit the rupture. I mean, they can't run away from it. The only issue is if you did it on someone like 64, if you don't kill him in time, he'll just bolt and wrath you. But if they can get this going before 30 seconds, actually, the rupture can set up the arrow. I guess that is a bit of a synergy. You get him to stand still, then you throw the arrow. Unfortunately, Jim Sky's in a bit of trouble. The rupture comes through. There's the arrow, 64. That's the synergy right there. I mean, it's not exactly the damage from the rupture that counts. It's the arrow. Unfortunately for Jim Sky, he'll get brought down. But Big Dick Pride will make it without venge or will make some vengeance happen as he brings down two. Now looking for more, though. The Astral comes out. There is still the mana leak on the Big Dick Pride, so he gets brought down. Gary does have the dust, but. 
It's not a right click that brings him down. It's not the dust that brings him down. It's the Thunder God's Wrath. Odin now in a bit of trouble. They're going in for the Astral Stomp. There is a bit more damage. Okay, they don't even need it. The Bolt, the Chain Lightning, 64 is on a roll. And that's an Aether Lens for you right there. As a Spade being in a bit of trouble. Jim Sky is looking for another arrow, something. He is able to evade the Echo Stomp. Jim Sky is now bitten off a little bit more than he can chew. He does have himself a Shadow Amulet. So unless they move the Zeus in here, he does not die here. In fact, it actually looks like Big Dick Pride's come in. They find Elizabeth do it. They walk past him. They have bigger fish to fry. They instead want a spade, the lower HP target. The rupture comes out. Does Jim Sky have an arrow? He does not have enough mana for it. The TP out from a spade. They are going to try to get the damage off, but they can't quite do it. Jim Sky moved in a little bit too late. And now Big Dick Pride, he's in trouble. The mana leak comes out. He's stunned. The body block from Elizabeth do it. And 64 just comes in to say thank you for the kill. Oh, man. Handed to him on a silver platter. That is uh, a very happy Zeus. 1,300 gold on top of that. Aether Lens, and now he is matching Gary for net worth. Fortunately for Gary, I think uh, a Klinks does a little bit better than a Zeus with a net worth for the early parts of the game. If that net worth goes towards an Orchid. There's going to be a Shadow Amulet, but what does Zeus not care about? Invisibility. Can't run from heaven. 64 will bring him down. Now move him. Going to be brought to down. No, no. Gary is able to, uh, or Gary gets rooted and move him is able to survive. Actually gets his bear out of there too. Now Elizabeth do its turn to make some action happen. The TP out though. Gary is alive. And such is the world for now. Take a quick look at last hits. You can see that the Shadow Fiend has been pr pressing ahead in the CS department, but it's not like, uh, it goes unrewarded because his net worth is also quite bolstered by this. Despite dying a couple of times in the early parts of the game. That, I'm looking for eight, right? One, there we go. That still means he gets his Blink Dagger. Not going for the Shadow Blade this game, which is smart considering the enemy team's got a Zeus. The Blink will allow him to blink in and get those initiations off. Unfortunately, they cannot be done under the veil of invisibility, so the guaranteed Requiems aren't quite a thing. But he gets the BKB, and he'll get good enough Requiems with that blink combo. While 64 going in for a Brangarang gets the kill, and he will should be able to survive this one. In fact, does Brangarang have any more points of mana shields? He, ah, man, he didn't max it. I, I still think he dies there even with a max mana shield, but hey. A game with this much magical, I think, leave it at one and the uh, the mana break and just go for that extra point in spell shield, really. Move them versus Black Pride. Well, or Big Dick Pride. I, wow, that's that's some Freudian stuff right there. <laughs> move them versus Big Dick Pride. Big Dick Pride loses. Move them wins and is able to get out alive from this one. Even gets his bear out safe and sound. A little killing a bear at this point in the game is all but impossible. So, moving back right now, 17 to 12 at 17 minutes into this game. So far, we've seen a lot happen, but the end result is that the Dire, though struggling in game adv advantage, is still pulling ahead, I think, in power level. I think they can, if they were to take a fight right now with a, with a smoke or something like that, and just move on in to the Radiance Jungle. They might be able to get one, two, three, maybe even four kills and get out of this with a significant lead. But if it's going to be a, that kind of farming game that goes on forever, then things might get troublesome for them. I mean, move has got the Hand of Midas, so you buy a lot of time for this Lone Druid. He will become a major problem for this Radiant team. I mean, even Anti-Mage has a little bit of trouble dealing with a Lone Druid because it's not like he can burn his mana and blow him up with a huge mana void, because Druid doesn't have a whole lot of mana. I mean, we're looking at a 400 mana Druid. You mana void him right now, you do about 300, 200 damage nuke at level 1 mana void. It's it's not good. Level 2, yeah, okay, fine. It's more like a 300, but still not a lot of damage for an ultimate that you need to get major kills. It's all about the health to mana ratio, really. If it's someone like a Zeus, who's got, like, that... Then it's good. But 
Speaking of. Wow, that was beautiful timing. And I just ruined it by talking about it. Anyway, Big Dick Pride's going to go in for Move'em again. You'd think he'd learn. And it looks like he did. Not even going for that kill, just rupturing Move'em's like, eh, I, I'm all right just standing here. I've, I've got some time to think about life. Meanwhile, a couple of hits going in. That is an Orchid, so he will pop uh, retroactively from that damage. And now, GG, just her, looking for to get away. He will not, with the raise connecting on his escape path. It was an easy raise, for courtesy of that blink. And now Odin, with the Dragon Lance, is going for a little bit more of a right-click build now. So, I like this transition, though I would like to see a BKB. He's making sure that... Going for this BKB doesn't hinder his mid-game power. Let's move him now. As three heroes converging, they're going to move in and try to get this kill. And it looks like, yeah, that, that should be more than enough. There is no way for him to escape out of that. And Gary, with that Orchid of Malevolence, is making huge waves in this game. This is what happens when you're left pretty much to have a free lane against the Lone Druid. You get all the farm you need. You move into the jungle, you get a couple of kills, and this this Klinks has given everything for this investment. He's 9-1-4 with a net worth that is skyrocketing the board. Now he'll move in, get a nice, easy kill on the Keeper of the Light, sits, gets back, resets his positioning. This is text mark, textbook play coming out from this Klinks. The Blade Mail's out, so he'll stop the attack. And then he should be able to turn around to Ace Spade with the support of his team coming through. He actually eats a creep. Unfortunately for him, he does get stunned by the Echo Stomp, but turns around for the Orchid on the OD just to get away alive. I mean, beautiful. Couldn't have done it better myself, honestly. That was really great. And he's able to walk away with two kills for his team, one for himself. I think I would have... It would have been better, I think, if Ace Spade had gone down. But really, you cannot be upset with a team fight like that. There's going to be an Astral down, but Odin is out of the range. He does have that blink, so if he wants to get aggressive, he can. But I think he needs his team there. Bottom lane, Brang Rang is moving in now for Move Him. They, they can. With Gary there, they can definitely make this happen. Bangarang's going to eat the most of the damage. If he's able to get away alive from this one, he will. The Orchid should chunk him down right about now. And Gary will pull a Wicked Sick to his name. 64 actually probably doesn't want to be here. If Gary pops into his invis, he's got the Orchid back up in three seconds. Gary's alive. Bear oh, wait. No, he's got a blink. Oh, man. I didn't see that. This is why you pay attention to hero items, folks. That blink beautifully timed to catch Gary with his pants down and puts another kill on the clinks a kill that costed the team how much gold exactly 983 gold putting Zeus really high on the board but still not quite touching Gary I mean he gave up a lot of gold there but keep in mind he had 2700 to his name I think if this clinks were to go something like uh Okay, first of all, is neither of these are unique attack modifiers now. Oh, wait, no. Blightstone is a unique attack. But no longer has the Blightstone. Searing Arrows is not the unique attack. Yeah, he can go for something like a Scotty right about now. I think I would prefer that, honestly. As Bangarang. Barely alive. Able to get out of this one. 64. Thunder Guy's wrapped in 30 seconds. Oh, the Anti-Mage will live. Meanwhile, Big Dick Pride. Moving through with an Echo Saber. Not not an item you typically see on a Bloodseeker, but hey. Get a Basher with that, and they can't really TP away from you. Meanwhile, Gary with the Mana Leak is able to get far enough away that he doesn't get hit, or doesn't lose enough mana for his spells, but does get out of uh, harm's way, given that the Zeus was close by. So the team now, Dyer, will move together. Jim Sky, haven't seen much of him recently, but his item set doesn't really make him useful. It just gives him, it really doesn't give him anything. I, I don't know if I like this. I mean, we're, we're looking at 1,600 gold for a talisman of, of, of uh, invisible or amulet, shadow amulet. God damn, I can't remember that. As Odin dies, well, I'm trying to remember the name of an item. <laughs> Rookie move. But the, the shadow amulet. Which, I mean, 1600 gold for that item is not worth it if that's all you've got for a long time. As Gary brings down Elizabeth through it, there is an actual imprisonment onto Big Dick Pride. He's gonna get hit. 
by a whole lot, which brings him down before the Earth Splitter, but he would have been hit by the Earth Splitter, which is where I was going with that. Still, though, I <sighs> at least finish the, the treads or some sort of boots. I don't really think you need a Shadow Blade right now. It's one of the, the least effective items I feel on Marana, just because, well, you've got a free Shadow Blade right here. So, not to make an excuse for missing that kill, but that is not a fight that should ever happen, anti mage You cannot man fight a lone druid right now. It's just not possible, as there's going to be an Orkin now. Onto the OD. Enough damage, maybe, to get the kill. No, it's not, but Jim Sky is going to follow up, blowing through a couple of those battle, battle charges. They do get the follow up. Kill is 64, isn't able to stop Gary from chasing back and around. The rupture now out. Onto the Zeus. He'll Thunder God's Wrath. Get himself out of the blood rate so it doesn't take any more damage. His big dick pride should go down to the echo stop as Gary now moves in for Elizabeth. Do it. Turning around on to a spade. The blade mail gets popped. 64 goes down. Odin gets that kill. And now with the blade mail down, Gary will move in again for a spade. Does he actually know? It looks like a spade knows this is coming. But the orchid is now out. So Gary should be able to get this kill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There it is. That should be enough, and it is. Gary, barely living through it, will TV back to base, heal himself up. And with 300 gold to a 3,000 gold to his name, see what he builds next. He is going to go in for the, um, the Bloodthorn. Not a terrible item by any respect. I still think I prefer the Scotty just for some survivability, but if he wants to go Glass Cannon, be my guest. My main issue with that is that the Zeus is just still gonna blow him to bits if the Orchid or if the Bloodthorn isn't used on him. So at least the Scotty gives him a little bit of survivability, gives him a lot more mana. And I mean even something like uh, a Desolator, nah, even a Desolator makes you glass cannon. I don't know. A lot of people think I have unconventional item builds, but I like to think I'm an innovator. Anyway, Lone Druid does end up going down. A, a, a plus in the direction of Pearl Bloodthorn, Bloodthorn if, if that's how you want to look at it. Any item can work. If you know how to make it work. I mean, if, if you're a Shadow Fiend and you want to build an E-Blade Dagon, be my guest. If you know how to make it work. Because, really, most items can have a positive impact on most heroes. The only things that... I would think are not very good synergizers, synergizers if you've got something like uh, a Daedalus on... Not even a Daedalus can work on a Crystal Maiden as long as you know or as long as you've got other items to make it work. Again, any item can work on any hero. I truly feel that. You just got to know what the timings are, what your position needs to be in a fight to have a positive net impact with that. And honestly, not every item is most efficient, but there's a situation for everything. And if efficiency in one department is not outweighing the advantage you get, I guess that's, I guess it depends on how you define efficiency, but this is why I love Dota. Really anything can work. As Keeper of the Light dies in three hits to the uh, to the Clinks, the Big Dick Pride now moving in. Earth Splitter is going to come down. Gary won't be uh, hit targeted by that. It looks like he is able to get away from that. As 64 going down in the mid lane, the Radiant are crumbling underneath the pressure now. But one positive thing going is that the Radiant's Bear is still having a decent time farming up and getting that next item, which is exactly what you need from the Radiant's Echo Stomp onto Bangarang. As he's locked under tower, not for a very long time. The blood rights out. The orchid or the bloodthorn is on the lone druid, but he's surviving through it all. He's just so damn tanky. And now the bear, savage roar out. A beautifully used savage roar is going to keep him alive for a little bit longer. The astral imprisonment onto Odin. Locks him in place. They just need the bear back for some radiance burn. There's another bloodthorn on the uh, lone druid. Is he able to survive through this? This time he goes down. With the hammer dropped from the Outworld Devourer, the Senny's Eclipse not doing enough damage. There is going to be a Hurricane Pike that locks Big Dick Pride back, but the Self Astral is not going to be enough to keep him alive through it all. And an 
indirect wipe of the Radiant team. As Dyer pulls out so much gold from that fight alone. Thunder Guys Wrath doing what it can to keep him back, but... I think the big thing here is that the key players of the Radiant, the, tar the heroes that had such a good snowballing early game, which, I mean, the Keeper of the Light and the Zeus, both of them hit a brick wall. And it's... I mean, it's one of those things where you got to look and see what could that brick wall be. And for the case of Zeus, it was a draft wall. When you're a hero that has mid kind of survivability, very low mobility, and high burst damage, well, the key thing here is to boost your mobility and boost your survivability without hindering the one thing that makes you strong, which is the damage. And he's done exactly that. He's gotten the blink, he's gotten the aether lens. So his mobility is higher, he's got a decent amount of stats for HP as, well, they bring down Big Dick Pride, but... The weakness he suffers from is the fact that if he gets silenced, he's nearly good as dead. Now, he's mitigated that by getting the Ghost Scepter, but the brick wall is that heroes like Clinks and Anti-Mage can run him down. If he Ghost Scepters himself to survive but is out of mana, Mana Void annihilates him. As Bangarang getting gang Bangaranged in his own jungle, he will survive this one for now, just her. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gary, ends up uh, with a Yule Scepter used to keep Gary in place for some time, and then a back away. But this brick wall is going to come down shortly if the Zeus can play this right, because he's not going to be the primary target from this Clinks for very much longer. As Speaking of primary targets, that is going to be a death on just her, but... Bangarang is going to survive this for now. The point I'm making here as more actions coming out on the top, looks like we've got some lull, is that once the Zeus isn't the primary target, and once his team can protect him to stay alive from Gary's onslaught, then the damage he outputs is going to be enough to clean up these squishy heroes that don't have very much survivability. I mean, Blood Bloodseeker, Mirana, both of these heroes can get annihilated by a, a full combo of Zeus's spells. Even Shadowfiend, Clinks, they're all fairly low HP, and I mean, this is... Example number one, that Bloodseeker, of course, it was an Ethereal Blade on top of it, but the damage is way too much. So, it's one of those things that that's why I was suggesting an item like a Scotty on Gary. That's why I don't really like the Shadow Blade on Jim Sky. It does nothing for your survivability. As, my god, I sound like... <laughs> I'm overly critical about this game. I don't know, I should look up some positives. I, mean, I was talking about how well Clinks was playing earlier. Maybe that's maybe that's outweighing. Maybe maybe my cheerleading of the Clinks is now finally being outweighed by my overcriticalness. I don't know. Maybe I should, I should just shut up and talk about the action. We do have a bit of lull in that as we take a look at some of the items. I mean, a spade. Not much development from where he was at. That blade mail still doing absolute work. We've seen it time and time again against the Clinks, buying him some time. And allowing him to get away alive sometimes. Brangarang is going to have the Battle Fury done. So a bit late to have it. But a late Battle Fury is better than no Battle Fury. If you're dead set on getting the Battle Fury. All he's got to do now is make use with it. Try to be as efficient as possible. Buy a BKB. I, l I could kiss him right now. I could absolutely kiss him. So many anti-mages would be scared to buy the BKB in favor of things like the, the Manta. Just because they think... There's one item build for the hero. And although maybe I, I probably would have gone for the Manta. Still though the BKB is going to be so good for him in this game. To stay alive to Mana Void. Meanwhile just her taking quite a bit of damage here. The Rupture will come out and he'll drop to it actually. Not expecting the Rupture to drop. I think I'd be in the same spot as him. So for the entirety of the Dire moving in. 64 is in a bit of trouble, but turns around for the Ethereal Blade. The Manta style from Odin is going to take it off, though. In comes the Earth Splitter, and now the Bloodthorn comes out onto the Zeus. Does he have enough HP to survive the retroactive? He does. He'll get away alive. Meanwhile, Big Dick Pride making a move on the bear. That's That that actually sounded really wrong. And the backline's Jim Sky will pop into that Shadow Blade. <laughs> oh, okay. 
And Gary looking for a follow-up kill, though he is alone. So any attempt right now on any of the retreating heroes would have meant his own death. He'll back off because of it. As Bringerang, sitting under his entrance, will go ahead and heal himself up from the shrine. There is an illusion rune, a good rune for the anti-mage to get. Ignores it for now. His BKB was used, and I imagine that got him out alive there, but... Not a shrine usage, I think. The cooldown, yeah, 300 seconds. So they just used a shrine on the other side of the map. Both shrines down, but a full team with nearly full HP. The only missing hero here is Odin, who went down in the last engage. Now Gary moving in, but that's a Ghost Scepter for the Keeper of the Light. And now Gary's got a very, very big decision to make here. And I think it's a, a decision that's quite easy. Does he go for Diffusal Blade? The answer is yes. In fact, he should have... Well, I won't say he should have a long time ago because I even I was kind of cheering for the Scotty here, but it's one of those things that now he should strongly consider just buying it. So I won't fault him for not having it now. In fact, I wouldn't fault anyone for not having it now, but it should be a very, very important item for him to get in the next couple of minutes is Gary now moving in. Remove him. They've got the Echo Stomp on a Jim Sky, and he gets blown to bits because of it. Gary cannot seem to find that opening, and I like this. Don't force it. Just play it smart. Play it cool. Actually, the team's TPing out. He might be able to go for this. Goes in on the Lone Druid, but he is going to get rooted. And the Blade Mail. Gary just kills himself on that damage. I mean, we knew that the uh, the Elder Titan had one, but move him, he was kind of, I mean, he was always within view of it, but didn't really tout it. Did he just cancel his TP? He did. Okay. So the Lone Druid does go down. Big Dick Pride gets a little bit of vengeance. Actually buys a Battle Fury of his own and a Shadow Blade. Interesting call. A lot of Shadow Blades against a Zeus. I am I'm confused. Odin. With the Manta style doing work, but stands just within range of the Echo Stomp. Bringerang, though, just sees a little bit more damage out or raise. Anything would be good. He actually blinks forward, get the kill on Elizabeth, do it. Pops the BKB and blinks himself, or at least walks himself away. So, a couple of kills now going the way of the Radiant Squad, or the Dire Squad. Only one for the Radiant. Now Big Dick Pride comes in, moves in, brings down a spade. Bangarang is now in, looking for just her, but the Astral comes down. Big Dick Pride is close by. The Blood Rite. Binding 64's uh, tail, but not quite getting the damage off onto him. Yeah, 64 makes his move around, goes in for the blink, now for the kill, gets the kill, and then walks away. Beautifully executed from him, keeping some vision and knowing when to move. Odin's got no way of stopping the TP, so... Again, does get out alive now. Bangarang going in for this kill that he has tried to get before. Actually just going in to cut the creep wave. Really good play from him. Just slow the game down and make sure that this uh, Lone Druid cannot seem to push. It is also some decent free gold that's just sitting there for you. And The reason why Anti-Mage is so much of a nuisance is just this. His mobility is fantastic. And unless you've got a lot of lockdown, which, I mean, this, this team doesn't quite have, good luck getting the kill onto him. So there will be a chase down. Gary looking for a kill, but that is that Ghost Scepter on Elizabeth Do It. And once again, I mean, the, the, the trick to no Diffusal Blade as then comes the BKB. That was an Ethereal Blade pop, so now the Zeus is in a lot of trouble here. There is going to be the Astral. Gary, I mean, he can't look for this kill anymore, but Big Dick Pride can. Goes in, two swipes, and that is all it took. He does end up going down. Another Ghost Scepter used, though, as Gary wants this kill. Ends up going for the Creep Wave first. The Rupture is on to just her, but it's not like uh, Gary can get this kill. Maybe he goes for it anyway. The BKB is popped, and he's doing no damage. The Blind is killing him. As Odin now looking for this kill, trying to bring down just her, but he can't seem to do it. The Echo stomps down. In comes the Mana Leak. He'll move forward, but the Earth Splitter, it does connect on him. He loses all of his HP in one punch. Brings him down. He does get Elizabeth do it on the tail end of his Death Requiem, but... It's a Pyrrhic victory at best, and just a flat-out disaster at worst. Dire, I mean, they're, they're falling, they're breaking apart at the seams here. Not out of it yet, I mean, they're still ahead on kills, 38. 
at 38 minutes, but it's certainly not looking good for the boys and red. From Sky, making a bit of Radiance burn, but he gets away out of sight, out of mind, sends the arrow at the bear, and keeps himself away. Of course, I don't really think that would have made a difference, but make sure that the bear just somehow finds him and walks at him. He gets rooted, that TP's Nurt, so. And I'm pretty sure Nurt isn't a word, but I want it to be. <laughs> the, 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 the word I was looking for was inert, but even that probably wasn't even the right word. So Bangarang is going to go in, look for the tower, just her is there. Does a lot of illusion damage, but decides to go in for the siege creep first. And that's all she wrote. Looking for some vision in the trees to see if they can catch him uh, an anti-mage that hasn't TP'd out. But unfortunately, that is an anti-mage that has TP'd out. And so, the game continues. There is the Shadow of the Silver Edge now on the Big Dick Pride. As with Silver Edge and Echo Saber, he does a lot of damage on start. In fact, uh, is there a way to double the Silver Edge procs? I don't think so. It only lasts 14 seconds with a cooldown of 24, so... Maybe if you had a hero with cooldown reduction and an Octarine core and... Actually, with a refresher, you can probably do it. Get a double Silver Edge proc. Silver Edge, walk up, hit him, refresh, Silver Edge, hit with a double hit. I mean... It probably would deal about as much damage as if you didn't have the Echo Saber. So it wouldn't be instant, but whatever the case, Bangarang and Gary are looking for just her, but he's just so mo mobile. I mean, look at his movement speed. He's just walking away from this one. Now, the tower is in quite a bit of a pickle. We'll survive the, uh, the glyph. A couple more hits come out, though. The Echo Stomp does connect with him on the back edge, but in comes Bangarang, looking for some damage. There is a Blade Mail, which stops Bangarang from hitting for now, but doesn't stop him forever. He now moves in for Just Her. The Requiem comes out, but it is an Astral oh, Just Her, so he doesn't take the damage from it. Instead, he does still go down, I think, the Yule Scepter, keeping him alive for now. The BKB, the damage comes through. Gary gets the kill with some burning arrows. Meanwhile, turns around now into Ace Bade. Two hits, not quite enough as, well, uh, it looks like uh, 64 and Gary have reached an understanding. He's able to TP away and then get him barely off the back of a bolt and long range chain lightning. Oh boy. What, what a hero, Zeus. I mean, Dak and E-Blade with Bolt and Thunder God's Wrath. No hero survives that. I mean, you can pop a BKB as much as you want, but once that BKB is done, it's just it's just over. Big Dick Pride's in a bit of trouble. I mean, there you go. That's the problem, I think, with Shadow Blades, but even without a Shadow Blade, that wouldn't have really worked out for him. I buy back on the Big Dick Pride. And it's now it's up to the Dire to defend their base. They've got Brangarang, who is doing, pushing out the bottom, split pushing, doing some work. As the siege creeps, are all, all the creeps end up going down here. It's just left the Lone Druid and his bear to do the deeps. Odin now gets uh, the Hurricane Pike on to move him, but not doing nearly enough damage as Bangarang on the bottom lane is doing some fantastic split pushing. Loses his creep wave as we take a look back towards the mid, bomb dire side of the base. The arrow does connect, but 64 is not getting brought down because of it. Does have a blink and ethereal blade in just a second, but he doesn't quite have enough mana to use all this. But actually, no, he does have enough to use all his spells. Doesn't need to, though, as the Rax is already dead. If anyone were to chase, they'll just get blown up by the burst of the Zeus. He'll go in for the TP, which means he leaves Elizabeth do it to die, pretty much. There's a Ghost Scepter, but that's about it. The Blind, the Blood Rite, locks Elizabeth do it in place, and now once the Blind ends and the Ghost Scepter wears, Elizabeth do it is Elizabeth dead it. Yeah, you like that? I ruined it again. I'm sorry. So two dead, but both with buyback. Actually, the Keeper of the Light buys out while dead, so he doesn't have buyback. He's dead for 40 seconds. I don't really know if uh, Dyer can make a, a substantial push off this one in the meantime, but 
Bangarang in the meantime. And meanwhile, now has a Basher on top of his Manta style, so his damage is starting to become very, very respectable. In fact, he's level 25 already. So, a low cooldown blink. I think I would have taken the plus 25 agility, but that's just me. Error. Oh, no. In comes the Requiem, and 64 gets 65 Wow, that made absolutely no sense. 64 has 60 died. That that would have been cool. That would that would have been amazing. Anyway, <laughs> Odin also will go down. Big Dick Pride coming in for a little bit of cleanup, but ends up getting cleaned up himself. The Bash is out, looking for the root. They've got the dust. If he turns around and just hits the bear, he'll get something for this, but still tries to run away. And, well, because of that, no consolation prize. Gary, meanwhile... Bringing down the, uh, the Necronomicon creeps. 200 free gold in his pocket for each one he kills. And now he'll get stunned by the Mana Leak, but it's not like they can follow up on that for now. Dyer just have to take a step back. As even though there are two dead on the Radiant, there are three dead on their own team. I think Bangarang is going to be a pretty important part of this game. If he can find a good jump onto the uh, the Zeus post Ethereal Blade usage, or even if uh, he can get the bash on him before he uses Ethereal Blade, this could be very good. But mo most of what Lee just has to drain his mana. I mean, we're looking at 2,000 mana, which means with a, what is it, a 1.2? 1 1.1 percent mana, mana void multiplier. That is a 2,200 damage nuke. I mean, you see one mana void rampages from anti-mages all the time. Well, that that is exactly what happens if you let your mana get that low. And given that one round of his spells only uses, or one round of his one round of his spells uses approximately seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred dam uh, mana. You gotta, you gotta really get some damage off on him because relying on him to use his spells to burn his mana is not gonna work. It's not like a tinker who can constantly just use spells. You've gotta get in, you've gotta hit him, and make sure he cannot e blade himself. So the key thing to do is to bash him, or to let him use e blade on somebody else. But the latter is a little bit more unreliable because usually you let your one of your teammates die because of it. So Dyer have lost Big Dick Pride, but they're moving in more heroes anyway. As Bangarang now moves in for the Coddle. Don't mana void it. Oh, he did not have to do that. Now mana voids down. So 64 actually uses his Ethereal Blade. He is not going to be able to use it again. The Bloodthorn comes out. Odin's looking for this kill. They've gotten an Astral Imprisonment, but now just her doesn't have it. Ends up using himself. Odin moving through, but the Dagon will destroy him. And now the Hex as Gary gets brought down as well. I mean... Astral, Yules, Hex, Hurricane Pike. Good luck killing OD because, well, you're not killing OD. So a wave of super creeps now moving in through the mid lane and, well. What can I wait for the Elder Titan? Let's go ahead and fast forward through this pause. Come on. Nope. 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 There we go. <laughs> that was a very long... What was that? Like... Two minutes? That was paused? Damn. I can't even get a game paused for two seconds. So, the Radiant will be up one player as uh, they've unpaused the game from the Dire. Actually, the Radiant will be down one player as they got their pause taken away from the Radiant. Bearing ring now moving in for 64. 2007. Okay, that's 1700 damage, but that's with the mana res or magic resistance. I mean, that's still a very sizable nuke. Can any hero survive? Okay, actually, only Coddle cannot survive a 1700 damage nuke. But that still does more than half of everyone's HP. I mean, well, much more than half for everyone but the Lone Druid, who is the abnormal one here with 2700 HP, but. 
get a veil of discord on this team and that that is much more that, yeah that's over 2000 damage if if you drop a veil of discord easy ethereal blade a lot more maybe, maybe the play is to hit him bring down his mana and then wait for him to self ethereal and then mana void and watch as the super high 2500 damage num uh, red number comes up oh so good Doesn't change the fact that 48 minutes into this game, we're 43 to 45. Lots of kills, but still no team in the clear for winning this one just yet. The Dyer are going to make their move into the Roshan pit. First one of the game to go down. Unless, you know, I'm misremembering something. 50 minutes is a long time. I mean, you could cook a pot roast in 50 minutes. You could, uh... You, you could cast a game in 50 minutes. Oh my god. I'm going insane. I am. I, I'm going insane. Move him. Now moving up the bottom lane with a huge wave of creeps. Arrow only serving to get rid of one of those. As Jim Sky proving that the Shadow Blade was a good idea, right? Actually, Movem's going to move in for that shrine. Ends up getting popped for a little bit of extra regen. Movem's in a lot of trouble here. The Requiem of Souls coming out, and he's tanky as hell, but he is not able to tank through that. I mean... <laughs> that was... I, I almost want to look at the combat log. I mean, I won't waste your time for that, but... That was a metric F-ton of damage. Gregorang is still pushing out the bottom lane. Doesn't have the does have the boots of travel, so he'll be able to join his team very shortly in the mid lane as they push out, looking to equalize the rack's advantage that the Radiant have accrued. Got another pause as we're waiting for the Elder Titan to come in. And it looks like we are gonna let this Elder Titan abandon. Ethereal on to Gary means it doesn't isn't up. So if the Dire were to find an opening, it could be good. Unfortunately, moving up onto the high ground and do someone is not a very viable strategy, and the Elder Titan will get the abandon. It's a shame, too. Ace Spade was having a fairly decent game, but now, well, his items can be given up. A lot of extra net worth can be given to his team. And we look at it, that, that was a huge boost on everyone else's gold. So... More items can come out. 64, does he have the Dagon 5? Yeah, he does. So it's not like he can buy a, a upgrade on his Dagon, but he can certainly get something like an Octarine Core or just mass buy intelligence to get some damage boost. I don't know. But looks like the fight might break out. The Blood Rite was popped onto the top lane. There is a rupture on to move him as he's, well, moving through the rupture. Ends up by popping the blade mail and walking a little bit further. They've got the Bloodthorn, but the bear is hitting. The actual imprisonment keeps the kill from, uh, or keeps the target from getting any more damage. So move him is able to survive through this. The bear hitting all the while. Now we'll back off with that Radiance as on the bottom lane, Brangarang is able to bring down 64. And also gets the tower, but no racks have dropped just yet. Another push onto the top lane as Big Dick Pride getting destroyed by the Astro or the Arcane Orbs. Just her. Now, pulling back, waiting for the Shadow Fiend to do his thing, and then moving right back in as Bangarang going in for move him. I don't think that he can man fight this one as back behind the lines. What the hell is Big Dick Pride doing this deep? Uh, yeah. So he might go down here. He is waiting in the trees, though. As Odin blinks back on Just Her. They turn around, though. A little bit of more damage coming out from the Arcane Orb. There is going to be a BKB, though. Just Her. That looked like that arrow would have connected onto him, but I guess it just barely didn't. A sharp now. Ash or Echo Stomp will lock in Big Dick Pride. But meanwhile, the racks on the top lane are taking a little bit of damage. Big Dick Pride still being stunned to high heaven. The Dire will back off for now, though. Arrow comes through, but Elizabeth Dewitt will turn around and sidestep. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, 
Gary moving in for these racks. Lots of damage. Bangering also coming in, keeping Movem at bay, but Movem's got one target and one target only. He wants to bring this Clinks down just so he can't do any more damage. He'll still go in for those racks, looking for the kill of 64 on the top lane. Get to double, and now they shift their attention onto this bottom lane, which is giving him so much trouble. The BKB pop from Gary. Can he get away from this? The BKB is not going to last much longer, which gives time for the Astral and the setup, but he only goes for the site, the Vice, to get the kill rather than set up for his team. Meanwhile, Big Dick Prize and the Necronomicon creeps will lock, keep, get some vision of him. How convenient. Elizabeth Dewitt says as the Astral Imprisonment is enough to get the kill. And even with one player down, the Raiden are able to hold and Oh, that's cool. That's how you see if they have a buyback or not. You can also see how long it is till day. Oh, oh, that's so cool. What is this? Oh, that's the spawn box. What else can you see? I guess that's all all shows. All right, whatever. So Gary now moving in, but he's had so much trouble staying alive. The Radiant will back off again. Looks like they don't want to press too hard. I can have respect for this. Don't don't push it too hard. Make sure that you've got all the advantages you need and none of the none of the hindrances that can come with throwing. <laughs> As the bang rang. Now moving in for the bear, looking to man avoid it. But loses vision. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Radiant still holding back in their base. I mean being down a player means that even if you're up up an advantage, that 4v5 can be crippling in some scenarios, so not not pushing their luck is the smartest thing they can do right now. Still 47 to 47 at 55 minutes. And the Lone Druid now moving in for Jim Sky. Normally an easy kill for him. Turns into a, a bit of a slippery situation. They can't quite chase him down. The Shadow Blade will get him out alive. As you've got Big Dick Pride also waiting in the wings. They might be able to move up and do this uh, as a duo. But killing this lone druid is a very tough task. Meanwhile, the anti-mage getting hexed but not exactly in trouble. All he's got to do is turn around and go for the kill. This is a solo Outworld Devourer, but he doesn't know that. There's no information for him to say otherwise. They do not have vision of their own jungle, but they will move in now. In comes the Abyssal Blade, and just her pops the BKB just in time. And of course, the high ground evasion also working in his favor. Brangarang going in with the Manta style, now moving in for the Lone Druid, getting a sizable amount of damage. There is no mana on the Lone Druid, but they cannot quite get the racks. They barely bring it down to sub... 100 HP, but it revives itself now back up to 200 already and climbing fast. It's unfortunate, really, that that OD didn't die there. <laughs> I mean, that, that by and large should have been a kill, but so many things worked in the OD's favor. One, the anti-mage waited a little bit longer than he needed to on the mana void, and two, well, the high ground evasion. I mean, it gets you every time. Unless, you know, you're the person on the high ground, and then it, the, the att attack will get you every time. So, I guess it gets you every time can work in that regard, too. It, it doesn't work for you every time. How about that? Gary will get, bring down those bottom racks, though. Finally is able to pull them under his belt. Unfortunately for him, well, Radiant's knock, knock, knocking on his door, and Black Dick, or Big Dick, god damn, I am screwing up with that one. Big Dick Pride. Has to buy back after getting cleaned up. Bangarang moving in. Looking for Elizabeth do it, but it's the wrong target right now as he's being stunned up, rooted in, and brought down. Does have buyback. Big Dick Pride also getting brought down. He did just buy back, so he cannot come back into this one. Marana is down in the back lines as Bangarang after buying back, taking so much damage. Gary, the immediate bash, the immediate root, and Gary is going to get brought down here. Oh man, Odin doing what he can, but it's not quite enough. Bangarang going for Elizabeth, do it. Mana Void, again, just the wrong targeting from this anti-mage. Every single fight this game has been decent for him, except for this one. Move him is just going in for the end here. There is one person alive. Bangarang cannot make this happen on his own. And so move him. 
well, he'll just go ahead and end the game. So a fantastic game from both teams. A lot of good decisions made, but also plenty of bad. And unfortunately for the Dyer, the bad outweighed the good. Opposite situation for the Radiance. So that's, that, that's all it takes. One team just has slightly better decision making, and it is all over. So... Thank you guys so much for watching this game. I'll give you a quick look at the post screen game screen. If you uh, want your own replay cast, you can go ahead and check the description of this video as always. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this game. Thank you so much to the first person who sent this one in. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all for the next one.